it, and, and he was a he was a movie. smoking fantastic. lobbyist for uh, watch. I've watched the whole movie. No, oh, I was staring at him when oh. I said that. But it's got uh, 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 the sports caster Rob Riggle. Yeah, he's the the firearms dude. Who, he's fucking hilarious. Is he the uh, firearms dude or the alcohol dude? Uh, he's the alcohol. Alcohol? The chick is the firearms dude? No. Hold on. Let me look it up real quick. You keep talking. Yeah, because uh, he, he he has like a slice of apple pie with uh, <laughs> s- like cheese on it. Yep. Put a and that was of, like his signature a, a dish. A brick of Velveeta. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a slice of Velveeta, not, a, not <laughs> an entire brick. That was, that was a story from when Baldwin and I got slightly plastered on Weedicus. We uh, f- were, were desperate for food and... There was only a brick of Elvita and a little bit of salsa. So we made ourselves a, a delicious dip. I might be fibbing a little bit. I don't see Rob Riggle in here at all. I see J.K. Simmons. Da ah, fuck. Who cares? But yeah. It, it, all I'm saying is this is you have to look you have to check out that movie. It's have fantastic. To. It's Your like life uh, will not go on without it. Watch like Game Bur- of Thrones first. <laughs> Working yeah, on you it. You got forty hours of that to go. Yep. Almost fifty. But you should watch uh, another one that's kind of obscure, but has a great casting. And if Your you're... hands are so white right now. I know. I'm picking like crazy, too. I feel, Whitey. Like, I feel like you. <laughs> like me? Hugh. Oh. What? Oh, fidgeting. It's fidgeting, yeah. Okay. But uh, Burn After Reading. Uh, Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt. Yeah. John Malkovich. George yeah, Clooney. Yeah. Uh, a few other kind of obscure, but recognizable people from different movies and whatnot it's it's absolutely hilarious and kind of a spoiler if you like seeing brad pitt get shot in the face (laughs) check out that movie (laughs) because it's the whole plot is these two gym trainers it's it's a few different plots going on but it's not insane amount of plots okay okay quickly favorite getting shot in the face moment in a movie for me it's absolutely, uh, what was the movie? Mist? The Mist? She didn't get shot in the face. I don't care. She got shot. and it, it, if, we're, if we're going with crazy people getting uh, shot. Yeah, no, just, no, point blank getting shot. The, there's this crazy religious bitch. You've um, never seen the fucking Mist? No. Jesus Is that a Stephen Christ. King? Stephen King? Uh, it was a short story, yeah. Yeah. Um, she's, the, you know, they're all locked in this convenience store and... She's like, by Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah, she's she's like, you know, saying this is the wrath of God and stuff, and we have to sacrifice people to make it better. And, yep. And, and so they shut her up by shooting her in the fucking chest at point blank. Well, because this is this is really late in the film, but uh, everybody's converted to her side essentially, besides like yeah. six people, and they're trying to take the kid away and use them that the kid as the virgin sacrifice essentially. Hey, like, you as a religious person would hate this bitch for how she taints oh, religious so people. Mm. So delicious, dude. You so when you see her so shot... Delicious. Yeah, when you see her get shot, it's like the most satisfying moment I, that I've, I have I think I've ever had in a in movie. In theaters, I literally stood up and went, fuck yeah, like threw a fist <laughs> yeah. up in the air. Like, oh man, every so, time. So after... So that, that one's mine. What's yours? The problem is, is that... Be I mean, thinking of yours. Oh, I already, I already have okay, it, okay. like, when, instantly. When I think of people getting shot, I mean, sadly enough, this one isn't a getting shot one because it trumps everything, every All right. single one of them. And it comes from a movie that you actually didn't like because of a, a screaming baby. Insidious. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. My favorite, and it just... That, that was because... really... I hated that baby. I hated it. <laughs> Yes, you fucking did. I hated that. You could watch the second one and just hate the movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no baby this time. So, <coughs> sorry. There was a baby in that movie, in the movie, like <laughs> in the theater, in the movie, that was just fucking crying 90% of the, the fucking movie. And it's it was more creepy. So what, what, what was this part in the movie? Uh, it's at, right at the end. It trumps every getting shot, getting stabbed, getting poisoned, whatever way of dying is when the, the woman... She gets the sense that something's fucked up about Patrick, whatever the fuck is, Patrick Wilson's character. Uh, she gets a sense that something's not right. And the whole, have you seen Insidious? Nope. I so, don't care. Spoil it. Kind of whatever. the whole plot device is. This, spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, the whole plot device is there's this 
further realm where spirits can inhabit people who are able to uh, uh, astral project themselves uh, into this realm, and it's kind of a way of uh, speaking with the dead and whatnot. So Patrick Wilson saves his son, blah, blah, blah. But apparently there was this, like, evil bitch who's been following around uh, PW's character the entire time. <laughs> Which, PW, PT, Silent Hills got cancelled. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Konami. Half-Life 3 confirmed, Half -Life by the way. 3 confirmed. <laughs> Illuminati. So, uh, the entire film, you're kind of watching this old woman who has a candle and silhouette. It's kind of fucking creepy. Uh, follow around his character. And you're kind of, like, suspicious of it. And then you realize that at some point in the film, she was saying, like, the connection kept getting stronger every time the picture got getting taken. Every, every, Jesus, there went the fucking grammar right out the window. Every time picture got done taken. Um, <laughs> every time his picture was taken, it somehow made this connection grow between her taking over his body and controlling him and whatnot in a mental state. Like, he is still in there and... But so this is going on the entire film, but you don't really think anything of it. it kind of gets pushed under the rug because it's more focused on like this Darth Maul looking demon, <clears throat> which it really fucking did look like Darth Maul. I'm surprised there wasn't a lawsuit uh, and saving the sun and whatnot. And everything's back to normal. So right at the end, she gets this feeling. She's like, something's not right. And she picks up the camera and turns around and Patrick Wilson's character is doing something, not really looking in the direction. And then. Right as she takes the picture, he looks up right at her. And then he fucking snaps and just goes, what did I tell you about taking a picture? And grabs her neck and wrings that shit out. <laughs> just, just fucking digs into it. And it's not a dummy at all. It's like legit her. And he's just, the way that she looks and the way that he's doing it, it combined for this beautiful glorious choking scene that would rival any porn, I think. Um, <laughs> and it just, like, and he just digs into it and just really gets into it, the look on his face and everything. And that's why when you say getting shot in the, f getting shot in the face or just getting shot in general, it's just that depth, that depth of killing somebody with your bare fucking hand trumps so that one, Shot that one, stat. that one goes for most brutal, I'd think. But that, that I'll definitely. Tr I'll try and think of one gun wise. So yours, Frank. Okay. Boondock Saints, when that cat gets freaking oh! destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't hold yeah. it. I couldn't hold it when that happened. I was not expecting that cat to turn into Just a mist on the wall. Exploded. <laughs> that was excellent. God. Okay. Uh, here, here's a good one. Uh, the first taken. The part where uh, his character, Liam Neeson's character, has been fighting that entire film. And you think, like, there's going to be that huge epic battle between the fat Persian bastard. He's holding he's holding yeah. his daughter. Uh, <clears throat> it's like Indiana Jones. Just like, it's like, yeah, that, that's oddly satisfying. All right, I guess Baldwin, that'd be a good one, too. Th think, of a, think of another category of favorite thing in a, a movie. Uh... I'm going to go with uh, plot device. Plot device? Something that holds together, like, you know, think of uh, Avengers and the Tesseract. Hmm. You know, it something that is the main focus of the story, yet kind of lays dormant, It, but it's the under, it's the glue. All right, what's yours? The Necronomicon. Oh, <laughs> okay. All because... Right. You know, it's all throughout all three movies, and I, I have yet to watch the new one. I don't know why I haven't, because it, it it's gotten good reviews. Just uh, they Evil over, Dead. Yeah, I didn't like it. They overhyped it. I think it was just. Um, I haven't watched yet. I can't make a bias yet. For for me, it was just way too over the top. Yeah. Like well, and I mean, just didn't do it for age, me. Yeah. But yeah, the Necronomicon. I mean, I look at it. It's. It's a symbol of evil made out of fucking human skin written in what, Latin, dead Latin, old Latin, if there's a fucking difference between uh, Latins. It was written in some, like, demon language. <laughs> and uh, the whole camera, the mist, the, you know, 
uh, in Army of Darkness when he has to find the book and say the spell. I mean, it's it's the perfect type of plot device, mainly because it's a book, which obviously fucking symbolizes plot, because what's a book? Yeah. It holds the story. <clears throat> but at the same time, the the central aspect of like the fucking face on the front of the Necronomicon and it's kick-ass name. It's constant references to current pop culture. I mean, oh, yeah. there's been video games that bring up that shit all the time. All sorts of stuff does. All right, let's go with Frank. I don't know why, but Tyler Durden jumped in my head. That's a very good. I like that. The, the split personalities. Do you want to narrow it down to that, or do you want to just go with Fight Club? Uh, alone? It's, it works. It yeah, works. probably just Fight Club alone. I don't know. That that was like the first and only movie that just melted my brain. <laughs> uh, especially like, the ending. Blah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I felt like an idiot. Like, when I was playing Bioshock. Oh, one yeah. One in three, like, it just melted my brain. Like, how did I not see this? Did you just say one in three? Yeah, Infinite was the third one. I, um... <laughs> okay. When I sorry. watched the movie, I knew that something was going to happen. So I was looking for it the entire time. Yeah. And I, by the time it happened, I was like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. It wasn't like an, oh, fuck, shit, I never <laughs> saw that coming. But there's there have been other movies like that where I was totally blown away by the end. But that oh, yeah. that one wasn't one because everyone had said, oh, you'll be totally blown away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that ruins a lot of movies. Oh, yeah, exactly. Movies, video games. Everything. Yeah. Right, like Inception. Everyone, that was the only one. The, best slice of the only thing that has survived it for me is uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Everybody told me to watch that, and I didn't want to watch it. I told everyone to fuck off, and then I watched it, and holy shit, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So mine, I'll leave movies and go to TV, and I gotta go with the TARDIS. The TARDIS is like the plot driving thing in every episode. It is the... And when it has its own episodes, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that's got to be mine. Um, so, uh, yeah, another category? Mm. One more category? We'll do oh. one more. Um, let's see. So let, let Frank come up with one. It's not going to happen. What do, what do you got? No, you no got it's Frank's no. turn. No. We got to go in a row. Do we want to sit here for five minutes? Anything. <laughs> anything. Best moment? Yeah, it doesn't have to be something so intricate. It could just be... Uh, favorite actress, uh, best nude scene. Think of, think of the favorite. Obvious, think of the Oscars, you know. Favorite time getting balls zipped into your pants. Most kick-ass album for a. I I'm thinking soundtrack. Yeah, soundtrack. but I'm also trying to figure out what I would say, and I don't know. Oh, so I, like I, your I, favorite soundtrack. Favorite soundtrack to a movie, game, what have you. To anything, just media. Yeah, sure. Uh, not music. That's not fair. Right now the situation would be <laughs> like albums. <laughs> the favorite soundtrack for this album. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite song off the track? What? <laughs> Are we starting um, with you, Baldwin? I, I, uh, okay, go. Mine is uh, just because not only did I love the movie and yeah, I'll stick with the movie. The Hobbit, isn't it? No, actually, <laughs> well, surprisingly enough. Holy shit! <laughs> uh, because literally, really, only one song: the Misty Mountains. Um, but for me, because, uh, Wayne is actually going to be doing it and I get to actually play in the pit. Um, I have, I bought the soundtrack the, the instant I heard, uh, one of the songs that Johnny Depp sang, uh, and the movie itself, while it was a little long and it did rival the Hobbit in length, but two hour and 15 fucking minute running time. Get to it, man. Into the woods. Into the woods. Into the woods. Because uh, it's. I've basic. never seen that. Well, here's the thing. So I didn't really know much about this movie. I'm just like, oh, you know, it's Grimm Brothers. Can't go wrong there. It's Disney. Yeah. They're doing well right now, as well, we've seen. We we don't want to get into it. We gotta keep going. Oh yeah. Okay. You go. Uh, me? No. Yeah. Oh God, we're out of order. Uh. I already know what you're gonna say. You do? Yep. Go for it. What am I gonna say? I I don't know. Say I don't want to ruin it. Tell me. I, I would say Mass Effect from you. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I did like Mass Effect. That's why I didn't want to say it because it would. Yeah, Mass Effect soundtrack. Um, overall soundtrack for anything, anything ever, Fallout Three. Yeah, I yes. that was second that's in my list. Fallout Three for, for sure. Yeah. For video games, that's number one. 